Hello, here's some new stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the next bit of higher biology. So we're on to unit 1.3, which is gene expression. So pens, papers, at the ready. So let's do this to begin with. If you remember from National 5 in Unit 1, when we sort of introduced you to DNA, part of it was to do with how you go from having DNA to making a protein. So to begin with, uh, see if you can do this. So produce a label drawing showing the link between DNA and protein and include the following terms, mRNA, amino acids, copy, nucleus and ribosomes. I mean, you could do it as a sentence as well, I suppose you don't necessarily uh, have to draw it. But press pause and see if you can do that and we'll see if I can, uh, you've remembered correctly. So just as a, a reminder, what you've got is your bases, which is your A, T, G, C. And then it didn't go into quite into this level of detail in that five, but essentially you've got three bases code for one amino acid and then the amino acids join together to make the protein. Okay, so it looks a bit like that. So it's bases, code for amino acids, amino acids join together to make the protein. And the little starter there, what you should have had was something like this. So you have got uh, DNA in the nucleus and it is copied to make messenger RNA. Messenger RNA goes out of the nucleus to ribosomes and the ribosome is where the protein is assembled. Okay, so DNA copied into mRNA, mRNA out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm goes to the ribosome to make protein. So this part of the course is called gene expression. So before we kind of get into nuts and bolts of it, have a look at, this is a good video, have a look at this. So go into YouTube and um, search for what is a gene and watch that. Okay, so you might remember the word phenotype from National 5. So phenotype is basically what the cell, um, what its function is, what it does, how it's specialised. So you want to be able to explain how cell phenotype is determined by gene expression. Describe the structure of RNA. And we're going to look at, we, we talked about mRNA at NAT5, but we've actually got three types, mRNA, rRNA and tRNA. So be able to uh, describe the functions of each of them. Now here's your nucleus. And within the nucleus, depending on what kind of living thing you are, you've got a certain number of chromosomes. Now within the chromosome, you have got various different sections. A lot of it, and we'll get to this later, actually doesn't do anything. It's just kind of mutated viruses from the past and things like that that don't perform any function. Um, however, you do have sections which are genes, and genes are the sections uh, which code for protein. So just think of a gene as a section of a chromosome, a sequence of bases. And gene expression. So a cell's phenotype is determined by the proteins produced by the cell as a result of gene expression. Um, and gene expression essentially is the genes that are switched on. Um, so if you have, if you think about your you know, the red blood cell, you have got genes switched on which allow it to have this particular shape and so on. Um, you have got the same chromosomes in your heart as you do in your skin. However, in your skin, you would have genes expressed which produce hair, whereas in your heart, although those genes are there, they're not actually expressed, they're not switched on, which is the reason why you don't have a hairy heart. Only some genes are expressed, so that means they're switched on in the cell. The proteins are then produced via these two processes, which we're going to learn in this topic, transcription and translation. And then the proteins that are produced determine what the cell's phenotype is. So that's the link, <clears throat> the link between what a cell looks like and the, the, the DNA, the genetic makeup of, of the living thing. 
the cell phenotype can also be um, environmental factors, sunlight and things like that. Um, diet can also have an impact on this, um, but it goes back in initially to, to which genes are expressed. And something to mention is, regardless of whether you are a mammal or an insect or a dandelion, all living things have basic housekeeping genes. Um, so if you think about, we talked about DNA polymerase, copying DNA, all living things have basically got to copy DNA um, and DNA polymerase is involved um, in that and, co and copying. So there's no, whether you're, um, whether you're me or, uh, you know, a buttercup, you're still doing the same thing. You want to copy DNA. So um, basically everything has got DNA polymerase and the gene that produces that protein is known as a housekeeping gene. So it's expressed by almost all cells. You can see a few up here. Um, so those, and this is all kind of involved in producing proteins or copying DNA and also in respiration, uh, which we'll get to later on in the course, various enzymes involved in that and metabolism. Most complex, you know, complex living things carry out respiration, so the the same enzymes are involved regardless of of what the living thing is. Another wee task, copy that. So DNA v RNA leave a wee bit of space in each box to write things down. Okay, press pause. What I'd like you to do is read that and use the information to, to fill in the table. Okay, so press pause again and uh, once you press play, I'll show you what you should have in the table. So this is it. I think um, the first column you should know from uh, National 5 and just earlier on in higher as well. So DNA has got two strands. The sugar is deoxyribose, and then the bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. The new stuff, and again, the, the first one you might know from that five, RNA has got one strand, so it's single-stranded. The sugar is ribose, and maybe you can sort of work out why then that's called DNA and that's RNA. So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, RNA is ribonucleic acid, take off the deoxy. And then... The bases for RNA are different, okay? So you've got adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. So RNA does not contain thymine, okay? Instead, it has uracil, and uracil pairs up with adenine. Go into GLOW and then TWIG and watch that. So we have three types of RNA. The, one, the first one, you know, from National 5, messenger RNA. The second one is transfer RNA. And the third one is ribosomal RNA. We're not going to talk very much about ribosomal RNA. We're going to kind of concentrate on these two. Um, but you can see they're shortened. Uh, and the way that they're written is the first letter is lowercase. So mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. So here is our cell. And we are in the we're in the nucleus for messenger RNA initially. We had this earlier on. So messenger RNA, its function is to copy the DNA code. And here's a new word. That process is called transcription. So mRNA is a copy of DNA. It's produced during transcription. That copy, uh, which is the mRNA, is carried to a ribosome. tRNA, transfer RNA, it's involved in the next sort of process, the next stage in the process of making a protein. So remember, you've got amino acids which, which make up proteins. So transfer RNA carries specific amino acids to ribosomes. So remember, you would have, depending on what the three letters are in the base, if it's AAA, you'll have one amino acid. If it's um, GCC, you'll have another amino acid. So tRNA carries specific amino acids to ribosomes. We'll talk lots more about tRNA later on. And then the last one, which people tend to forget about, is called rRNA. And it simply is a molecule which combines with proteins to make a ribosome. 
So it's basically part of it's part of ribosomes are RNA. Okay, here's something uh, that I usually do in the class. I don't know if you'll have uh, coloured paper clips knocking about. I think we might have talked about this before, but um, what you could do is if you write down these letters and you could do a bit of colouring, I suppose, if you wanted, couldn't you? It's a nice relaxing way to spend a bit of time. Uh, you can, if you've got coloured pencils, you could do it in colour. Um, I want you to write down that strand and then write down the, the complementary RNA strand which goes beside it. So remember the kind of base pairing rules. So press pause, do that. So this is what you should have. And whenever we do this in class, people make the wee mistake with, they forget about the uracil thing. So remember in RNA, you don't have thymine. Instead, you've got uracil and it's going to pair with adenine. So you should have your complementary strand U A U G A R G G G A U R U R A. Okay, that'll do for just now. Have a break. Come back another day. Okay, here's a starter. Um, fill in, do, write down numbers one to seven, and see if you can do that. Press pause. So number one, DNA has got two strands. Number two, the sugar is deoxyribose. Number three, the bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Number four, RNA is single-stranded. The sugar is ribose. The bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. And remember, uracil pairs with uh, adenine. And your three types of RNA for number seven, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, and just bear in mind you use that lowercase letter uh, when you're writing them in the short form. So this time we're going to have a look at the process of transcription. So transcription is when you turn DNA into mRNA. Okay, happens in the nucleus. And there's a nice little twig video for this, so go into Glone and have a look at this. Search for how does DNA make protein. So transcription is simply, as a definition, when an mRNA strand is produced from a section of DNA in the nucleus. So it's not all of the DNA that's being copied here. So remember, you're producing a protein. The protein is going to be... Um, made using a gene, with the gene which codes for that protein, which is going to be a section of DNA. So it's a section of DNA copied into mRNA, that is transcription, occurs in the nucleus. And there are various stages for this, which we're going to have a look at. And try not to get mixed up with DNA replication, okay? So some differences. The first one is the enzyme here is RNA polymerase. So when we did the DNA replication, we we're making DNA. Here we're making RNA. So it's RNA polymerase. That is our enzyme. And what it does is it unwinds DNA and it unbreaks the hydrogen bonds between base pairs. And then the next thing that happens is once it's been opened up by the RNA polymerase, You've then got an mRNA molecule starting to be produced, and what it means here, um, free nucleotides, is you'll just have kind of ATGCs, um, sorry, not ATGCs, AUGCs, there's no thymine. You'll have um, kind of nucleotides knocking about around here, um, which will be available to pair up with the opened DNA strands. So an mRNA molecule is produced as free nucleotides form complementary base pairs with one of the opened DNA strands. Okay. RNA polymerase is involved again. So part three, RNA polymerase adds nucleotides. And again, this is a bit like DNA replication. It only does it to the three prime end. Okay, so remember the, the three prime on, the, on the, the sugar. So RNA polymerase adds the three prime end of the growing mRNA molecule. 
and once it's got the required gene or the required sequence, then the completed strand separates from the DNA. Here it is here, and at this point, this is known as the primary mRNA transcript. Okay, so RNA polymerase opens up the DNA. And then you have three nucleotides which are added on to the added on to the three prime end by RNA polymerase, and then once you get to the end point, um, you get the primary mRNA trans transcript. And I'm just going to go and close the window because there is a crying child outside, not mine. Okay. Right, YouTube, um, open up a new tab and search for this outline of DNA transcription. And that'll take you through that process that I just discussed. Next thing, as, as I kind of said, as I went through transcription, it's quite easy to get DNA replication and transcription mixed up, and I don't want you to do that. So draw this table and see if you can fill it in. So press pause and do that. So let's see, DNA replication, what is being copied is all of the DNA. So it's when you have mitosis, when you've got new cells produced, so everything gets copied. And in transcription, on the other hand, what's being copied is just a small part of it. So it's the gene which codes for a certain protein. So it could be, as I kind of used an example of it before, it could be the gene which expresses keratin, which is your, which is hair. So that would be that would be expressed in, in your skin. In replication, the product is DNA. In transcription, it's mRNA, or you could have had primary mRNA transcript there. For replication, you've got two enzymes involved. They are DNA polymerase and ligase, whereas transcription, it's RNA polymerase. For replication, you do need primers, whereas for transcription, you do not. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, just as a, a wee summary of this, whatever way you want to do it, um, you could do it as a, you could do it as a poster. You could just write it out. You could do be a bit more creative, whatever way you want to do it. Um, if we're in the class, I, I did have pipe cleaner and plasticine available, but um, alas, we are not. So trying as much as you can from your head, um, write out whatever, illustrate, display the four stages of transcription and have those, use those words, DNA, RNA polymerase, complementary RNA and primary mRNA transcript. And that's a break. Leave. Do something else. Okay, welcome back to Higher Biology. This is, we've got the stages of transcription but they're all mixed up. So what I'd like you to do, put them in the correct order, um, A, B, C, D, and just a wee description as much as you can of what's happening at each stage, as scientific as possible. Press pause. So you should have C first. Um, so C is when the enzyme RNA polymerase unwinds DNA and breaks hydrogen bonds between base pairs. So an mRNA molecule is produced as free nucleotides form complementary base pairs with one of the open DNA strands. Part 3 is A. RNA polymerase adds nucleotides to the three prime end of the growing mRNA molecule. Um, I would say that what people would tend to miss out with this one or what they forget about is adding it to the, you know, the point that it's added to the three prime end. And finally, part B. So part B, the completed mRNA strand separates from the DNA and it is now known as the primary mRNA transcript. So that is our stages of transcription. So moving on, we talked about primary mRNA being produced um, and the reason is because it has to be modified and it has to become mature mRNA, so that's the next stage of this. 
So another new process for you, and quite a few new words here. So RNA splicing. So that primary mRNA transcript that has been produced, it's got two different areas within it. Um, some of them are called introns and some of them are called exons. So here's your original DNA and it's got the introns and exons in it. And you can see after transcription, when you've got your primary transcript, the both introns and exons are both retained. So the introns are the light blue here and the exons are kind of darker blue or red. However, when you, here's a primary transcript here, when you've got your mature transcript, you can see a little difference here. So the light colour was the introns and they have gone. So the introns are sort of superfluous here. Um, they do have some functions, which we'll mention later on, but they don't code for proteins since so they are removed. And splicing, what splicing means here is the exons are spliced together. So the exons, they do code for proteins, so they're joined together and they make the mature mRNA transcript. Okay, so RNA splicing, introns are removed from the primary transcript. For the mature transcript, the exons are spliced together and they are what's used to go on and produce the, the code for the protein. Now you do have alternative RNA splicing and let's just start by looking at this drawing here. So there's your original DNA strand. So you've got the green as the introns, I guess, and you've, the red is the exons. So you've got your primary mRNA, which has got four exons, one, two, three, four. And you can do something or something does occur within cells called alternative splicing. And you can see that for to produce one protein, three of those exons have been used. And then to produce another protein, three different exons or a different um, different combination of those exons have been have been used. So alternative RNA splicing is when several mature transcripts can be produced from the same primary transcript, depending on which exons are are retained. So as a result, one gene can code for several different proteins. Okay, so you you can have you know you're going to have more proteins then you would, you're going to have more mature mRNA um, molecules been able to produce than there are primary mRNA because you're using different, you're using different exons. So here's an example here, two antibodies, very, very similar genetics. So here's your, um, here's your exons. And you can see that for the one on the left hand side, one additional exon has been taken from the, the primary transcript. And as a result of that, the antibody remains stuck, anchored to a membrane, whereas the other one doesn't have that exon. So it's, it'll move about freely in the bloodstream. Way to remember it, your RNA splicing introns stay in the nucleus whereas exons exit the nucleus. Okay, they go on to make the, the mature transcript. Okay, uh, this is a little activity to demonstrate RNA splicing. So I would have given you a wee copy of this, but you have to write it out. So write out that sequence without going to cross-eyed and what you've got is within that, these sequences and their introns. So get a highlighter and or whatever, underline them, score them out. So I want you to find those introns. Um, you're then going to cut them out and set, set them to one side. And then what's left are the exons. So you're going to put them together to make your mature, mature transcript. And you can glue them onto a bit of paper. So what you should be left with at the end is introns put to one side, you can maybe draw a wee box around them, and then you've got your mature transcript, which is the exon spliced together. Time for a break again.
Okay, welcome back. Starter this time. See if you can do this. So I'm looking for process one, process two, and A, B, C, and D. Here we go. So A, that is your primary mRNA transcript. B, that is an intron, because you can see it's, it gets removed. C is an exon, because it gets retained. D, that is your mature mRNA transcript. So these two processes here, process one is transcription, process two in which exons are spliced together and introns are removed, that is RNA splicing. So we've gone from having our original DNA in the nucleus, we've copied it into primary mRNA, We've then taken out the exons in the process of RNA splice. Tape, sorry, we've taken out the introns and we've put the exons together in the process of RNA splicing. So we've now got our, our mature transcript and we're going to go into the last part now, which is turning that mature mRNA into a polypeptide, which is another word for a protein. And that process is called translation. So translation, as a definition, is the synthesis or the making of protein as a chain, of, a polypeptide chain, under the direction of mRNA. So a bit of a mouthful there, but basically you're using mRNA to make a protein. Um, from that very start of S3, you'll remember proteins are made at ribosomes, and also we need energy for this, and that comes from ATP. And here's what it's going to look like here. So we need to go back to transfer RNA. This was something that we, we just mentioned before as the three types of RNA, um, mRNA, rRNA, and tRNA. Now tRNA is found in the cytoplasm, and although it's RNA, so it's single-stranded, it actually folds back in itself, which you can see quite, quite well in this diagram, uh, this picture. So there's hydrogen bonds between its base pair, so it actually folds back in itself. And what you've got, though, although it's folding back in itself, at one end you've got a triplet or three bases exposed, and that's called an anticodon. Okay, so anticodon, one triplet of bases exposed, that's at one end, and then at the other end you've got an area where an amino acid can attach. Okay, so maybe you're beginning to see the link here between our RNA and protein, because remember, proteins are a chain of amino acids. Now, anticodon, new term, triplet of bases, each anticodon is complementary to an mRNA triplet of bases. So on the mRNA, you've got a codon, and in the tRNA, you've got an anticodon, and the way I always try and help people not get mixed up, anti has got a T in it, transfer RNA has a T in it. So anticodon, tRNA, codon mRNA. And this is the way it works. So here's mRNA, so obviously this would be a lot longer, but you've got the codon and the mRNA. That matches with an anticodon, which is on tRNA, and then you've got an amino acid, remember, which is going to be attached to the attached to the transfer RNA. So one transfer RNA molecule attaches to one amino acid. And just another wee drawn of it. Here's your mRNA, mature transcript, which has arrived from the nucleus. You've got your three bases exposed, um, which is your codon, and then this is the tRNA, anticodon down here, and you've got, this is tyrosine up here, so this is an amino acid. Now we have two different types of codon on messenger RNA, start codons and stop codons. Now start codons, as you might imagine, start translation and stop codon indicates the end point for making the protein. So that's the stop translation. Um, this is just an example, you don't need to know any of this, um, but UAC, and that is a, it goes with AUG, which is the start codon. Okay, and then these ones here, AUU, is not carrying amino not carrying an amino acid, so that would be a stop codon. Okay, but just 
as long as you kind of know this bit up the top. Have a look at this video. I'm hoping that is the top hit. Um, if it's someone translating French to English or whatever, then it's not the right one, obviously. But yeah, something to do with um, translation in terms of making proteins. Find that on YouTube. So as we did for transcription, let's go through the stages for translation. So the first thing that happens is we're at the ribosome, remember? So the ribosome binds to the 5' prime end of the start codon. So this is the start codon here, and it's the 5' prime end of the messenger RNA. The next thing that happens is your transfer RNA arrives. So the anticodon, which is on the tRNA, here it is here, UAC, um, the anticodon or the tRNA carrying an amino acid binds to the start codon via hydrogen bonds. Okay, so we've now got this link between messenger RNA and tRNA beginning at the start codon. We then have this kind of moving along, so think of it as like thread going through a needle or something like that. So the next codon combines with its complementary anticodon and we then up the top here for your amino acid, you get a peptide bond forming between adjacent amino acids. Okay, and basically this is just going to move along. So number four, more codons and anticodons combine with more amino acids being added to the growing polypeptide chain. So you can see that tRNA there, it's done its job um, and you've now begin, it's the, the beginning of the chain of amino acids. So When's it going to finish? When we get to when we get to the stop codon. So when the ribosome reaches a stop codon, the polypeptide is released from the ribosome. So here it is. So this is your chain of amino acids to produce your polypeptide. Just another wee drawing of it. So you've got your here's your mRNA coming in, codon, transfer RNA amino acid chain being, uh, beginning to be built up. Have a look in this on YouTube, just another way to help you visualise it, search for translation animation. Now I've got a wee activity related to translation, so I've got these in the class, um, but I think it's just as easy for you to do it. And if you take a photo of that, and have it sitting on your phone and you can do the next activity uh, and I should just explain the way that this works so you go from inside to outside so if you're told okay oh, these are all amino acids around the edge so if the code is uh, G A U then you go G A U so the amino acid is aspartic acid So here's the task. So there's your DNA. So write that out. And then using your knowledge of base pairing, underneath that, I want you to write the mRNA that goes with that. And you can see it's separated into the triplets of bases. Okay. And once you've got your triplets of mRNA here, then the photo that you took on your phone of that, that wheel, go back to that and write down the names of the amino acids. So you should have a chain. And then once you're finished, if you wish, you could draw here little circles of different colors to show the protein. Okay, so press pause, do that, and I'll show you what you should have. So your mRNA should look like so. Amino acids like so. Methionine, leucine, and so on finishes the stop codon and you should have a beautiful little chain of amino acids to make your protein which is these colours. So just demonstrating DNA to mRNA, um, the tRNA deposits your amino acid and you end up with a nice chain of protein, a nice chain of amino acids. Break time. Okay, last little bit of this rather lengthy topic. 
So describe how proteins are held in a three-dimensional shape. So a protein's shape determines its function. Okay. Um, so depending on how you know the, the amino acids are folded, that's going to determine how the what the protein does, what it's how it works, its function. So if you look at this one here, it's in this shape, so it's an enzyme, whereas this one is a kind of backwards S, so it's involved in cell structure. Now there's the chain, and you can see is you've got the peptide bonds between the amino acids. But what you also have in addition to peptide bonds is amino acids which are non-adjacent. So that means like say that orange one and that yellow one they will also interact with each other. So, for example, um, through hydrogen bonding and various other interactions. And as a result of that, you can see the amino acids are kind of folded back in themselves and you get this particular shape. Okay. No, oh, I didn't know that was there. So there's a kind of image of a image of a protein. So it's kind of folded back in itself. And because it's in this specific shape, it can do its job. So proteins in your body, so they make up about 20% of your body weight, and it's just an all you've only got about 20 different amino acids. Um, so it's just a combination, various different combinations of those. Um, eight out of the 20 amino acids cannot be produced by the body, so they must they must be consumed by eating proteins. This is why sometimes you know people are um, sort of wary of or, of going vegan and, and so on because you do not still need to get protein from various sources in order to, to get the amino acids um, the body requires. So protein sources, lean meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy, dried beans, nuts and soy products. So you go, that went a bit home, home ec there, didn't it? Home economics. Right, so that's proteins in the body. And just to remind you, put it all in a bit of context, here's your various stuff or a few different types of proteins. You might remember this from Nat5. So you've got structural proteins, you've got your enzymes, of course, hormones, antibodies, um, receptors, doing various different jobs. Now this um, video talks you through, I think, the whole thing, going from the DNA to, to the to translation. So have a look at this. I think it's about eight minutes or something. So if you search for DNA hot pockets, it should come up. Right, next little task. Um, I'd like you to take a photo of this. So this is a bit like the wheel that we had. So this time, instead of reading it as a from um, as inside to out with the wheel, what you do is if you have got a code which is say U A C, what you do is right there's U, so I'm working in this, then there's A, so I'm working in down here, and then I'm going back across this way. So U A C would be tyrosine. So take a photo of that and then do the tasks on the next page. Okay, so that sort of thing, it quite often comes up in exam paper, so it's just to make sure you're kind of confident in, in using it and can use it correctly. So the first one, the amino acid produced by the codon UUU was phenylalanine. The amino acid produced by codon ACA was threonine. Cysteine, the possible codons are UGU or UGC. For lysine, AAA or AAG. A codon, which would end translation, so you're looking for um, a stop codon, so that would be those three. And then the anticodon for methionine, so you have to kind of work your way back because that table was codons. So the anticodon for methionine, the codon is AUG, so the anticodon would be UAC. And then again, working backwards, the amino acid with the anticodon CGA where you're going to have a codon, which would be GCU, so the amino acid would be alanine. Have another break.
Okay, uh, hopefully this looks familiar, we've, we did one of these before. So this is all of the stuff we did um, in this little subtopic, so I want you to read through it. And there's 15 mistakes, um, and you could print it out if you want, but write down what the mistakes are and write in the replace the incorrect word with the correct word. Okay, so transcription is when an mRNA strand is produced from a section of DNA in the nucleus. The enzyme DNA polymerase unwinds DNA and breaks peptide bonds between the base pairs. That's wrong. So this is transcription, so it's RNA polymerase, and also it's not peptide bonds that are broken, it's hydrogen bonds. An mRNA molecule is produced as free nucleotides form complementary base pairs with one of the open DNA strands. DNA polymerase, that's that mistake again, so that should be RNA. DNA polymerase adds nucleotides to the 5' prime end of the growing mRNA molecule. No, that should be 3' prime. 3' prime end. The completed mRNA strand separates from DNA. It is now known as the primary DNA transcript. Nope. Primary RNA transcript. Or mRNA transcript you sometimes see. RNA splicing is when exons are removed. No, introns are removed from the primary mRNA transcript. Introns code for proteins, that's wrong, so that should be exons in there. Exons code for proteins, so they're joined together to make the mature mRNA transcript, which moves to the mitochondria. That's wrong as well, that's ribosome or ribosomes. Next paragraph, translation is the synthesis of protein as a polypeptide chain under the direction of DNA on mitochondria. That's wrong, it's the, under the direction of mRNA on ribosomes. tRNA molecules help decode an mRNA sequence into a protein. Each tRNA has an attachment site for two amino acids. No, that should be one. One amino acid and one triplet of bases exposed. That's an anticodon, which is complementary to an mRNA triplet of bases, which is a codon. The mitochondria, there's that mistake again, that should be a ribosome. The ribosome binds to the five prime end of the start codon, which is an mRNA. The anticodon tRNA carrying an amino acid binds to the start codon via peptide bonds. That's wrong, that's hydrogen bonds. Um, peptide bonds is between amino acids. The fact that, yeah, that's the next mistake, isn't it? The next codon combines with its complementary anticodon. A hydrogen bond forms between adjacent amino acids. No, peptide bond, that should be. More codons and anticodons combined with more amino acids being added to the growing polypeptide chain. When the ribosome reaches a stop codon, the polypeptide is released from the mitochondria. I think I went a bit overboard in the mitochondria, really, didn't I? But anyway, that's that's wrong again, obviously, so that should be ribosome. Right. You might be wondering what on earth this is. So this is um, anagrams. So these are all words that have been covered so far in higher biology. So here's um, fun times. I want you to try and unscramble these and work out what the word is. And then once you've done that, um, write a sentence at higher level biology with that word in it. Could just be a definition, could just be what the word means. You could also combine more than one word uh, to make a save time. So uh, pause. So number one, ubexy eiders, deoxyribose. So you could say uh, deoxyribose is the sugar found, is the sugar part of DNA nucleotides. Sabe is base. So you could say, you could just name the four bases, or you could talk about the bases in RNA compared to the bases in DNA. Mirip, primer. So a primer is a short sequence of DNA bases which starts DNA replication. Selig is ligase, so an enzyme which combines fragments on a DNA, on the lagging strand, combines fragments of DNA. L-co-united, nucleotide, so a, you could say a nucleotide is the, the is made of three parts, deoxyribose sugar, uh, phosphate, um, and base. Clar is uracil, so uracil is a base found in RNA but not in DNA. Rotten, Intron, so introns you could say do not code for proteins, so are removed during RNA splicing. Donicote, anticodon, so anticodon a triplet of bases found on transfer RNA. Deep tip nabod, 
is peptide bond. So that is a uh, bonds which join amino acids and RANT is tRNA. So tRNA is transfer RNA. So transfer RNA involved in the process of translation attaches to mRNA and carries amino acids. And a good thing to do, I think, just to wrap this all up is if you get a, if you've got a big bit of paper, sort of A3 size paper, um, try and put it all together. So you might want to split it into three sections, say um transcription and then RNA splicing in the middle and then maybe translation and just try and write it all out, draw it all out. I think diagrams work well for this. Um and See if you can do that, just as a kind of summary of, of everything you've been doing.